Good morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Podcast. True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum, and the Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Season 3 in episode number 245 of the 246 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. I'm barely audible, I'm told. All right. Let's try that again. How's that? Better? Okay. Well, hello, kits, and good morning. Welcome to Season 3 and Episode number 246 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Today, recording day is Tuesday, November 7th. 2023 and it looks like it is going to be a gray and windy and rainy day here at the beaver lodge oh well it is autumn after all <laughs> i'm your host the eager beaver pronouns he him hey mr beaver a and with me as always is my good friend mr grizzly um we have a uh, Tuesday morning nibble for you. But before we do anything else, uh, let's say hello. Well, let's thank our sponsors, the Pepper Master, the Miss V Mysteries from Corbin Moon Publishing and CanadianTarot.com. And then ask Mr. Grizzly, how's your mental health today, sir? Well, sir, my uh, mental health, it's actually solid. Yes. Which I'm I'm happy to report. Yeah, I'm feeling good. Uh, I got a good night's sleep. Uh, I had a fairly productive day, a fairly productive evening. I had a little bit of social and leisure time. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good and uh, kind of happy about that. Not going to lie. Not going to lie. It's good. It's good to be good. And I don't get to say that very often. <laughs> so a solid. when I get the chance, you know, I like to, uh, I like to take it. Yes. Like so a anyway, rock. I got a bum, 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 bum. <laughs> little Ashford and Simpson. Ah, yes, yes, uh, yes, yes. I wish I could say the same thing. Um, I've been uh, going through a tougher bout of insomnia over the last 30 days or so. Um, so not as bad as the one we, we had last time on the show where I was really, but just not great sleep. So um, when that happens every now and then, I happen to just conk out where I happen to get horizontal. Uh, so uh, that happened yesterday, I think, before nine something i stretched out on the bed on the covers fully dressed fell asleep and then it seemed i had a good sleep going because it was one in the morning and i was still sleeping usually i wake up after mm. a few hours and um, the love of my life decided to come to bed 
And rather than grab one of the 20 various different things that we have in the house with which to cover themselves and sleep on top of the covers with me and cover themselves with something else, he decided he wanted to get under the covers. And then he was a little trapped, so he decided to pull the covers slowly that I was on top of, which, of course, woke me up. And I've been up since 1.30 this morning. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. And he is fortunately still alive. <laughs> I am very happy to report. <laughs> uh, so, yes. Uh, Don't get stabby. No, 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 no. I, I love him. <laughs> I will just have to ask him why he made that decision. <laughs> while, trying to, while trying to control the twitch in my eye. <laughs> as I ask. <laughs> uh, but time speaking of twitches in my eye, uh, yesterday there's a whole bunch of really interesting and really weird stuff. Okay. Conservatives from coast to coast to coast. The politicians, not the people. Why the hell are you being weird? It, it's yeah okay it's a thing right um there's two or three things that happened yesterday um the first one um the one i am the least pleased about and the most alarmed about uh to be totally honest uh is there's a youngest member of the mla in uh, well, of the legislature, sorry, the youngest MLA in the legislature, in mm -hmm. who uh, had some. You, you, I went blank for a sec there. I couldn't hear you. Okay, the uh, yeah. youngest member of the legislature, the youngest member of the legislature in Alberta, had okay. to say yesterday, uh, and the UCP caucus clipped it and um, said, "Must watch." The youngest MLA in the Alberta legislature just destroyed woke, woke culture in a powerful speech. The next generation of Alberta polo, political leaders has arrived. One, um, I'm happy to report that woke culture is doing just fine. I saw her wave to me as she was taking her morning jog up. <laughs> um, it was not destroyed. Uh, all that happened. No, we're okay. Some, and, um, that definitely needs more life experience. Um, something in the legislature that a lot of people decided to agree with and amplify. But uh, while they hear uh, woke culture being destroyed, um, I hear something much different. Mr. Grizzly, if you would. Okie dokie. I have not seen this yet, so I'm probably in for a bit of a shock, aren't I? Yeah, I would say so, yes. Okay, here we go. Let's uh, let's hear what this uh, youngest MLA destroys woke culture has to say. I got into politics to sustain the Alberta we love and to expand on the strength and freedom that nourish the Alberta spirit. We are strong when we are free, and we are free when we are strong. To sustain our strength and freedom and to ensure that these principles remain a beacon for generations to come, Alberta must face two sets of related challenges simultaneously internal and external. First is the woke culture of progressives, which includes radical environmentalism and an obsession with identity politics. Woke progressive culture is a creature that feeds on division sown by invented grievances. It is a creature that reduces and diminishes people to narrow identities. It is a creature that opposes freedom of expression in the public square and in our schools and universities. It is a creature that scorns science, faith, and hope. Woke progressive culture is a creature hostile to the core traditions of Albertans and who we are. It divides friends and families. It pits parents against children, citizens against neighbors, and workers against businesses. It is a creature that afflicts many, chief among them our friends across the aisle, Mr. Speaker. And in this execution of that progressive plan, we are seeing an attack on Albertans, on our provincial identity, our energy sector, our farms and ranches, our institutions, and our families. 
We are seeing an assault on parental rights and authority tacitly endorsed by Ottawa with New Democrat complicity. And this is wrong. As the main founder of our province, the famously pragmatic Frederick Haltain often repeated, there is no compromise with wrong. The family is the fundamental building block of society and how citizens naturally pass on the torch of culture. Healthy and strong families beget strong communities and healthy societies. Without strong families, individuals quickly become vassals of the state. There's no culture without families. And our coalition was built on this principle and on the promise that families are protected from state intrusions. What in the Christ did I just fucking watch? Vassals of the state? Yes. That is Chantel de Young, uh, the MLA for Chestermere Strathmore. Now, they looked at that and uh, they heard that and they said, yeah, yeah, well, she just destroyed rock culture. Um, Mohan, just uh, there's only one group of people obsessed with pronouns and their identity. As she is saying, they're obsessed with identity. She's talking of other people people and putting yeah. them in the box and what i'm hearing is um there is a i'm i'm seeing a human being in the legislature which is the house of all the human beings in that yes. political jurisdiction standing up speaking of other human beings that live in that jurisdiction and other human beings who are in that legislature representing other human beings, speaking yes. of them as if they are afflicted with some creature condition. And they represent the biggest internal challenge or threat to the province of Alberta currently. And what do you do with a group of people who are infected with some creature affliction who represent the biggest internal threat to a certain area? Yeah. And they are cheering for this? It's really disturbing. As much must watch. And she actually, in that speech says talks about the people across from her mm. while they're in probably looking directly at janice Irwin. i'll bet you she was i would not be surprised who's indoctrinated here yeah no shit well it, the statement about uh, woke identity politics then she says our, I, our provincial identity. Wait, okay, what is that? Yeah, I live in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. I identify as a Canadian. That's it. Yeah, I live in Ontario. And yeah, I live and love Ottawa, but I identify as a Canadian. That's it. I don't identify as an Ontarian. I'm pr proud Ontario. That's bullshit, man. I'm just a Canadian. You want to have an, a provincial identity, congratulations, you're fully free to do that. But this lady is out of her goddamn mind. She is really, really lost it. She's been indoctrinated into this, uh, I'm going to go with the religious right-wing extremism, perhaps? Maybe? I don't know. What do you think, sir? Because what she's saying is just beyond, beyond description for me. I, 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 I'm having a hard time understanding it. It's uh, troublesome, to say the least. Uh, she is literally demeaning people in that house. Dehumanizing. Completely. Classic dehumanization. I, talking about people as if they're essentially infected zombies. Mm -hmm. And I think we've all seen enough horror movies to know what we do to zombies. Oh, yeah. This is in the week of Remembrance Day coming. In the week of Remembrance Day coming, 
we have people talking about other we have Canadians speaking about other Canadians as if they are less than human and a political party putting that on the web and saying this is must watch. It's quite disturbing. And cheering and celebrating it. It's really disturbing. This is not normal. No, it's not. This is not normal. Speaking of not people, normal. oh yeah, not normal. And what you said, like this, what are we first? This clip, Scott Mo, Scott Sloma. Okay, here we go. Mm. I'm gonna try and give me a second here while I. I gotta, I gotta prep for this. Okay, all right, here we go. We're today. Uh, Premier, last week you said that if the federal government doesn't ban. Oh, great. Of course, now it times out. <laughs> the spinning circle. Oh, there it is. Okay, infinite is. waiting. Oh, oh. Yeah, let's try it again. And on carve outs for natural gas or other heating sources, basically. Well, it just doesn't want to cooperate right now. So I'll give it a minute here. Let's see if it can buffer. All right. Sometimes uh, it's a. It's a separate video clip, and I don't know. Sometimes it does that. It's very strange, and it gets. It's very upsetting when it does that. There's no reason for it to do that. I can't see anything that. Oh, that might have something to do with it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Just looking at the resources in the background here, it's like, whoa, that's an awful lot of stuff going on. Let's see what. Let me shut down a couple of things here so that we can probably do this a little bit better. All right, Give me two seconds. So, yesterday, of course, um, the premiers uh, of the provinces uh, decided they could all get together and agree uh, <laughs> that uh, the carbon tax should be uh, removed from all forms of home heating and that uh, the policy was terribly, terribly, terribly unfair. We... Uh, Premier, last week you said that if the federal government doesn't bend on carve-outs for natural gas or other heating sources, basically beyond heating oil, that you as of and your government as of January will stop collecting it. I just want to play for you the federal finance minister's response late last week to that, uh, that threat, and then I'll get your reaction to it. Let's have a listen to Minister Freeland. It is entirely appropriate, and I think an expectation shared by all Canadians, that everyone in the country should follow the law. That's our expectation, and it, it's our job for to ensure that the law is enforced. It will be. Premier, does the minister have a point? Does, does doing something illegal here really solve anything? I would say that uh, we are going to follow the law. Very shortly, there's going to be a law in Saskatchewan uh, that will state that we won't be submitting uh, the carbon tax uh, on our, how we heat our homes uh, with, with natural gas uh, to the federal government. And I would say we're also following the law of thermodynamics as uh, heat pumps simply don't work in the climate uh, across the prairie provinces. And so uh, there are multiple laws uh, in this space. Uh, very shortly, there will be another law for, uh, in place in Saskatchewan, and that's the law that we are going to follow. But with all due respect, I, I take your point on the piece of legislation that you're going to pass, but there is a way in which this country works, right? That you collect a tax on behalf of the federal government or vice versa, that the federal government collects some of their taxes on, on behalf of the provincial government. I mean, is this the most responsible thing to do to start off? On, and I get your concerns. I certainly just put them to the federal minister. But to start off on this foot, where, you know, what kind of slippery slope are we starting here? Well, I, I would say we're making exactly the same decision as the federal government did. The federal government did it, uh, made the decision to hold uh, the, the carbon tax payments uh, for heating fuel, which impacts largely Atlantic Canada. What we're saying is we're going to have make a similar decision uh, that is going to have an impact on Saskatchewan residents. I don't think anybody can agree uh, with the most recent carve-out that the federal government is applying uh, their carbon taxation policy fair. Uh, most certainly it's not fair to all Canadian families. Yep, told you I was bringing the weird. Okay, there is so much wrong with that. Number one, Christian Freeland, boom. Mm -hmm. There's a law, and it's our job to make sure that it is respected. So everybody turned around, oh, they're going to throw Scott Moe in jail. That's what she thought. No, that's not what she said. Said there's a law. 
the federal government collects taxes on behalf of the provinces and the provinces collect some taxes on behalf of the federal government and then they're supposed to sort it all out according to their agreements. If one person decides to unilaterally change that deal, they are breaking the law. The Premier of Saskatchewan is proposing breaking the law to make a point. Number two, when asked about it, so, oh, we'll follow the law, we're going to be passing the law in Saskatchewan. And we're going to be following the law of thermal dynamics. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, how about federal law, poodle? Because that's what we're talking about. And are you literally, did you literally just go on camera and say that you're going to pass a law in Saskatchewan that's going to override federal law? Yeah, it just doesn't work that way. <laughs> and what is the, like, and is it just me on a total petty point, but is this guy like trying to like channel Don Cherry? Because what was that oh, suit totally. in that pocket thing? He's definitely doing a Don Cherry. It, it, here's the, the, the comment from Tavi G in the chat. The Finland uses heat pumps. I shared an article about that yesterday. Response was, doesn't matter, don't want heat pumps. I know that they're, they're using them throughout all of Scandinavian countries, uh, Nordic countries. Uh, Finland, well, Iceland uses geothermal because they've pioneered and, and perfected geothermal yes. heat. And here's the third thing. And cool. Yes. Here's the third thing that's wrong about that. What does whether heat pumps work or not have anything to do with whether or not you're going to collect carbon tax on heating because as a federal government, you've recognized that home heating oil is the most expensive and most carbon intensive and that you're going to take additional measures to try and actually eliminate that source of GHGs. The whole principles, that's what's going on. They're saying it's unfair to all the other regions of the country. Because it just so happens that disproportionately in number. Yes, it is politically savvy. Of mm -hmm. course it's politically savvy. So what? Wow, the liberals played politics. Ooh, it's like the conservatives going, oh my God, how dare the liberals compete with without one hand tied, without the hand be, be tied behind their back. Ah. How did they get that hand free? Ah, it's like okay, yeah, it's politically savvy, but does it reduce GHG emissions? Yes. Mm -hmm. Does it make life more affordable for people who are on the most unaffordable home heating source and have to pay it up front? Yeah. Yes. Does this federal government have a track record of targeting measures to people who need it most? All of its tax policies and rebates have been income tested. There's a certain portion at which you don't get it. There's a certain portion where you get some, and then there's a certain portion where you get even more, and there's a certain portion where you get all of it, depending. On... It's That's the exact same principle. And what Scott mm -hmm. Miller is saying, well, we're just doing the same thing the federal government is doing. The federal government is retaining that. But no, no. The federal government is deciding not to take in money for itself by not charging carbon free pricing for three years on home eating oil. And that's for everyone, even in Saskatchewan, if there's some people. Plus, there's the rural rebate that applies to everyone as well. That gets doubled, even if you live in Saskatchewan, even if you don't heat with home eating oil. You are getting some help if you're in a rural area already. That's the part of this program nobody's talking about. And he's sitting there and he's going, him not collecting taxes on behalf of the federal government, keeping those for himself or not charging them at all. That's not the same thing as, a fed, as you saying the taxes that you are taking in for yourself, you are going to forego. Right? Doesn't well, he... Isn't he kind of breaking the law? In there? Yes, there's a difference. I mean, there's a difference between I lend you money and say, "Hey, you know what? I don't need it back," and you borrow money from me and say, "Hey, you don't need it back." <laughs> you don't need this. You'll be fine without it. Yeah, don't worry about it. And that's what Scott Moe's doing, and he's saying that it's the same thing. Then the other thing <laughs> that Scott Moe did yesterday is that because there was an opposition motion in the House, right? And it was like, the NDP, 
for some reason, swallowing itself whole. Yes. <laughs> right. Oh my God. Unbelievable. But Scott Moe came back yesterday with something like, oh, well, that motion was defeated only because the liberals got the help from the Bloc Québécois, a party that wants to break up Canada. Oh, so the vote is not valid because the Bloc Québécois sided with the liberals. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But when, when the Bloc sides with the cons, that's, that's, that's okay, right? Right, because had the Bloc sided with that group, with your side, Mr. Mo. Oh, then all of a sudden, those Bloc Québécois and all the citizens of Canada who are equal to the citizens of Canada in your province, who are represented in the same damn house. Oh, you would, you would have called that vote a, a, a meeting of the minds, a, a, a great moment in national unity. Oh, you would have been happy to take their votes then. Oh, yeah, they would They would have been real party and real votes then, would have they? Mm -hmm. Right. And, Just, I, and, and how many times was this guy concussed? Because didn't this guy just, like, months ago pass the Saskatchewan really wants to become Quebec Act? <laughs> Wasn't there a Saskatchewan first sovereignty act? You're, yeah, you're, uh, <laughs> you're, Saskatchewan wants to leave. Okay. Who are you going to join? This is, Where are you going? But this is a move. Where are you going? This is a, a separation move. What There's doing. 1 million people in the province. What are they going to do? But I'm not no longer going to participate in the Federation according to the rules. And I'm not no, no longer going to remit you the taxes that are yours or charge them or That's a Saskatchewan first act or whatever type move or like the Alberta first act or whatever, right? That's the type of thing that's like, mm -hmm. I'm separating. I'm no longer participating. I protest. I whatever. It's like 1,220,207, oh, 170 people in the province of Saskatchewan. Please tell me, how are you going to support yourselves? He's going to pass an unconstitutional law. Yeah. <laughs> and then he says he's going to follow it. And therefore he will be following the law. I am. He sounds like Trump. <laughs> Speaking of him. <laughs> yeah. Pretty good segue, right? Yes. Not bad. Not bad. Um, he testified yesterday. And it was a, uh, what, what, what do they say in the trades? A shit show. Everything you expected it to be. Everything you expect it to be. Um, he was agitated. He was asked a question. He went on a long speech, didn't try to answer. He is still in court trying to defend the fact that he did not commit fraud when the judge has already decided that and issued a summary judgment. Yeah. It's like, no, 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 no. That, that part's been proven, sweetie. Right now we're just discussing how much fraud was it actually? Does he, how much you need to pay? And how much you need to pay could be up to $250 million and plus losing all your certificates. In fact, you've actually already lost some of your certificates to operate because the fraud was so obviously it was proven, proven that you didn't need to do it anymore. Now, this is not a jury case. This is a judge alone case. And Trump keeps on insulting the judge. <sighs> Bold move, Cotton, as you keep on saying. Um, <laughs> Let's see how this plays out. It led to the judge actually saying, quote, I beseech you to control him if you can. And if you can't, I will. I will excuse him and draw every negative inference I can. Pretty heavy and duty, Ar if you ask yes, me. Judge Arthur and Run said to Trump's lawyers. And it seems that uh, you, you can tell this is getting to Trump because, and I'm going to read this it was, uh, from Bo of the Fifth Column reporting. But this is the way he put it. Uh, Trump treated it very much like a campaign stomp. Stop. The statements he made, he was making, were not for the courtroom. They were for public consumption. At one point, he was asked about a document, and he said that, you know, he was too busy with China and Russia and trying to keep our country safe. And then he was reminded that he wasn't actually president during the period in 2021 that this 
it just didn't go well. Is <laughs> the way he put it. Dude can't keep his lies straight. And here's the thing, right? Because when you're speaking to the news or on the news, it comes with fact check, but it usually doesn't come with instant fact checkers. Well, that's not the case in the courtroom. Because people no, come prepared. No, somebody and unlike TV or in the news, that which can be shown and that which is known and only that which can be shown and what is known is admissible in a courtroom. And Trump's classic behavior is about not showing anything and trying to keep everything hidden. Bad. You do that, you go to the box, you know, uh, Two minutes by yourself and you feel shame i mean because i had to cut the last part off because they're not going to get he, he doesn't get to go no. free <laughs> oh, oh, oh well played sir <laughs> thank, you. thank you so it seems that he is uh trying to provoke the judges into getting so mad that they commit some type of error which would then give him a grounds for appeal which probably explains why the judges have been bending over backwards like Cirque du Soleil contortionists to give him every freaking courtesy when his cheek should have been pressed up against a wall and he should be wearing silver bracelets and be in jail by now. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yes. So, and then, uh, so he's not going well. Uh, you know that this case is probably going to end up very badly for him. And uh, he still has to suffer the indignity of Ivanka testifying after him. I'm sure that was scheduled just right. The two boys, right? They testified first. But his little princess, who was too busy to come and testify during the weekdays, knowing that court usually doesn't sit on weekends. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yes. Now that, well, I don't sure if daddy has to keep on testifying because apparently it takes him 20 minutes to answer one question. <laughs> and they got a lot of well, questions for him. <laughs> complications. Yes, complications. But it, it does appear uh, that somewhere along the way, um, Trump uh, did admit uh, that he did see some of those documents along the way um, and that he approved a few of them and stuff like that. So it's not that he's never, never, never seen them and only left that up to other people and totally relied on them. So he kind of undercut himself. Eventually in some of the answers, he had to drop a little actual truth. He was wow. just trying to Imagine that. Hide it all under a mountain of the rest. That should be interesting. Stay tuned. See how that happens. <laughs> see what happens. Because, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Back to Canada. In the House of Commons. Yesterday, there was a vote, as we mentioned. There was a motion. It was just an opposition motion. And it was the motion text that given the government has announced a temporary three-year pause to the federal carbon tax on home heating oil, the House call on the government to extend that pause to all forms of home heating. The sponsor of that motion was the <clears throat> honorable, huh, Pierre Polievre, conservative. Mm. Uh, it honorable. was defeated. The nays 186, the yeas 136. There were four paired votes. Uh, but if you go to open parliament and look at the vote detail, um, there was one, only one, two uh, conservatives who weren't there, but their votes were paired. So they got a proxy. Uh, the NDP voted for it, which boggles the mind. But then again, yeah, if was, you, was, uh... but if you understand that um, the majority or a good chunk of NDP seats are actually in rural areas. Mm -hmm. But here's the interesting thing is that there's a whole bunch of them that voted yes, but there was one, two, three, four, five, six out of 24 that did not vote. Alexandre Bouleris did not vote. 
but I believe he's in a metropolitan Montreal riding. Don Davies didn't vote. Did Jenny Kwan didn't vote. Matthew Green didn't vote. Laurel Collins didn't vote. And Taylor Backrack didn't vote. I would venture that probably all those six are in urban ridings with younger populations. That would make sense. Who would have that would, that would a stand problem reason. with the NDP voting for something that basically makes the situation worse with regard to carbon? Now, Jagmeet Singh is out there saying, well, you know, something like, you know, I'm very loath to vote with the conservatives on anything regarding the environment because they have no plan, but I'm voting against treating one region of the country favorably. They also don't have very many seats in Atlantic Canada. If I think, in fact, I don't think they have any. Um, yeah. Yes. Uh, thing it was a little that, disappointing. The thing is, is that if the NDP really wanted to do that and hold to its principles, it would have asked that the carbon tax not be removed from home heating fuel mm -hmm. in order to maintain the total and full integrity of the program as it was. Not lower the bar for everyone else. Raise the bar to create the equal footing. Not lower the bar to create the equal footing. And the Bloc Québécois, of course, voted against it because, of course, a move that cuts pricing on pollution in any way is not good for the entire planet. Not because he's a separatist, not because he wants Canada to fail, because of fact. <laughs> mm -hmm. Pretty simple, right? Actual fact. Not rocket surgery. Not rocket appliances. The, the contortions required. The contortions required. Incredible. Just incredible. Oh, man. I don't know. I, I, I just... I, yeah, the mental gymnastics are quite something, aren't they? And how is this a smart idea? Like in any way, how is this a smart idea? Well, this Cassie's comment here, I think, is 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 bang on. The, the federal NDP are such a mess; they appear like they are trying to hurt cats. Yeah, I mean, when 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 the leader of the party is is repeating conservative, well, conservative reform party talking points, and blaming Justin Trudeau for provincial jurisdiction dude you know better than that do better than that and of course yesterday when the the, the premiers of the provinces were meeting i think it was was it doug ford it might have been doug ford who said uh, federal government stop giving money to municipalities uh, give it to us the province so we can dole it out as we see fit um but the municipalities are the ones who are actually responsible for building housing because the province hasn't built anything in decades and, that, and that's and my friend that's you 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 knew exactly where i was going because that indeed was the last bit of weird <laughs> yesterday uh doug ford i mean oh my god talk about undercutting everything all the work that you have just done mm -hmm. How many disastrous press conferences has this guy had? Oh, I see. this claiming, but it's because we have to build homes. It's because we have to build homes. We have to build those 1.5 million homes. I will leave no stone unturned. I will work the phone 24 seven because my heart bleeds. Yeah. For the. Uh -huh. I am 
left me speechless. I've got it uh, right here. Send it to, to you, Mr. Grizzly. Left me completely speechless. And we know what's going on here, right? It's the thing I mentioned when all this happened. Oh, Housing nice. Accelerator Fund announcements. We have Sean Fraser going out. Going from city to city to city to municipality, from town to village to city. Announcing money here and money there and money there. And every time he makes that announcement, it's a good news announcement on a file that is topical and top of mind. And given the number of cities and towns and villages, there's almost an infinite number of announcements. This guy could be busy for the next two years just going making an announcement in a week. And because Doug Ford is, well, Doug Ford. Uh, yeah. Or Premier Porky Pig. Uh, every time he talks about housing, all we hear is wee 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 wee. <laughs> we hear RCMP. So, Doug, take it away. You know, uh, all all uh, premiers would agree with this. You can't have the federal government going into a, a certain town or a certain city and uh, dumping funding and not even discussing it with uh, the province. That's a, that's unacceptable. We call it jurisdictional creep. Uh, obviously, they don't want to work collaboratively when they do that. Uh, we do want to work collaboratively. We'll get a bigger bang for the buck for the, the people that need affordable, attainable homes, nonprofit homes, if we all work together. Uh, so we're encouraging the federal government. Let's all work together. Let's look at federal lands, municipal lands, provincial lands, and uh, we'll do a much better job for the people in need uh, right now. So we look forward to uh, hopefully them changing their mind, not uh, serving each and every one of us one morning. ABC town uh, dropping millions of dollars uh, when that's not their jurisdiction. Uh, that's our jurisdiction. We welcome their help, and uh, hopefully they, they'll put an end to this. So now he's an expert on jurisdiction. Oh, and oh, now it's his jurisdiction. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So, yeah. so we have the, the the premier, and I just love jurist premier jurisdictional creep. It has levels. Um, oh, isn't God, this yeah. the guy that, in the middle of an election, decided that Toronto should have fewer wards? jurisdictional creep isn't this this guy who uh, determined that we should have strong mayors in certain places that can override the will of the people who elected them jurisdictional creep and isn't this uh the person who um imposed on municipalities mzos without their consent jurisdictional creep just give me the money. I'll, I'll, I'll take care of it. Don't worry. Yeah. About it. no, it'll, it'll be okay. Just like I took care of that COVID money, uh, billions of which I lost over and over again. And just like I took care of those healthcare dollars I asked for, which a lot of them never actually made it into the healthcare system. But yeah. Oh, and then the I money. cut $2 billion from the healthcare budget. Yeah. But give us the money to build the houses, to build the types of housing that we've refused to build all the time and that we rail against because it's costly, bloated government social programs that we don't believe in and trust us that we'll get it to the exact same places we got it before with the COVID money and the health money. I just dumbass Dougie Donut seems more concerned with wanting to control cash flows than actually building $1.5 million homes. In fact, he would prefer that the money not be given at all to yes. the municipalities. Oh, we can't be having that. Why not? Why not? Why can't we be having the that? Thing, Doug? Especially when we have that a premier me. that's leading a government that's under criminal investigation. Why can we not have that, Doug? I, 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 Do you need some to skim off the top again for that little fund uh, to keep your kneecaps? Is I that where the, that's what it is? Well, that's the whole thing, eh? Now that I heard that, is that where those other uh, the four million here and two billion there and two billion suddenly we're talking about real money mm -hmm. happened to go? We're building homes. No, the province isn't building a damn thing. Private developers are, and Dougie is trying to get this money to his private developers to build them. So why give it to the municipalities who are actually responsible for building homes? 
when I can give it to my developer friends and they can get rich off the uh, free labor I'm going to provide them with the apprenticeship program for the grade 10 students that will drop out of high school and work as tradespeople. But they won't get paid for two years because they'll be apprentices and they have to learn and we'll, we'll reimburse those companies for the trainers. It's all a gigantic goddamn grift. Uh huh. But all of a sudden, wow. I do not know why this guy thought that this was the time to undercut his central argument. My heart was in the right place. I only did it because I care about building 1.5 million homes for all these people that, for the 800,000 immigrants per year that Trudeau was sending into Toronto. Don't check my numbers. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Man, 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 man. Yeah. Oh, breaking news. Our good friend, the official bringer of joy to the Beaver Lodge, Mateo, is watching from his tablet and has sent us some medals and some Canadian flags and a few, I'm going to guess, baseballs? Tennis or balls tennis or baseballs. Because yeah. the, the color kind of would make me think tennis. But the stitching. But they have stitching. <laughs> yes. Like this. And then some some emoji faces, including an angel. <laughs> yeah, Elaine, you like that. Don't check my numbers, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, kids, I have no idea what's in the, what was in the water. But conservatives, why the hell are you being weird? I don't need oh, to follow I these laws. Let's take a vote for something that will choke the planet so that we could save you a couple of pennies now. Like, let's rail against the guy who's actually taken an initiative that will actually make life less expensive for people who really, really need it, who need it mm. and reduce GHGs. Let's get a, create a whole culture war over heat pumps and pretend that somehow a technology that works in Scandinavia magically has a geofencing around it. Thank you, Elon Musk, to prevent them from working. They're effective to minus 32 degrees Celsius. Uh, they still function after that. They're just less efficient. That was in the chat. I think it was, I'm not sure who said that. I, I'd like to give credit where credit is due. I think it was Mohan who said that. And I think in the cooling, so, they're effective up to like 54 degrees Celsius. Wow, that's a, that's efficient. <laughs> All right, it's just uh, we're literally telling people, literally telling people, mm. this heat pumps don't work. It's like if anybody in Scandinavia gets Canadian news, they're laughing at us. Oh yeah, no. I have friends. I have friends throughout Norway. Uh, friends in Finland. Um, do I know anybody in Sweden? I don't know if I know Emil. anybody in Sweden. Well, we pardon Emil. We haven't met, but yeah, that's right, Emil. Yeah. I forgot about. I'm sorry, Emil. He he doesn't join because you know it's like very early in the morning over there yeah. for him. Or late, late. I don't know what time it's. It's different time. Six hours later, or it's like six hours ahead. <laughs> yeah, so it's afternoon. Sorry. It was when we were doing the Friday night shows, he would join in and that was late for yeah. him. So oh, I gotta, yep, yep. don't ask me to do math. I'm not a good math person. <laughs> well, Hey, maybe you're a conservative. <laughs> oh, sorry. 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 Did, sorry. Did we just learn something? Conservatives can't math. They well, can't uh, compare prices for the Turkey year after year. This. They take many four of years of carbon pricing and compare it to a one-year inflation rate. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And let's and, let's remember, many of them are against vaccinations and and apparently uh, hygiene, according to uh, this lady, whoever she is. Did you know that literally no animals wash their hands and they are fine? They eat off the ground where other animals poop. How dumb are we to think that we needed soap and hand sanitizer to survive as a species? Oh my dear Lord.
Oh my god. Oh my god. That's stupid. Science is, is real. It changes constantly. Some of the things are solid, like gravity doesn't change. Gravity's a thing. It always stays the same. We need oxygen to breathe and water to survive. Right. Good what? personal hygiene is what has kept us alive. It's what stopped the plague from spreading. I, I just... Um, and then one more, uh, you reminded me, one more bout of conservatives being weird. Mr. Grizzly. Oh, yes. Uh, may I introduce you, kids, this. if you have not met him, to uh, the finance minister of the wannabe independent republic of Alberta, um, telling you without telling you why it is he absolutely most definitely should not be in charge of setting up an APP, Mr. Grizzly? I just, I, I, okay, here we go. Here we go. Let's, 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 uh, let's have a look at this. Something just came to me and I'll share it with you too. I think Alberta should pursue a subsidy where we will, we will help if Albertans want to convert from natural gas to home heating oil, maybe we'll, we'll help with uh one-time cost to pursue that. If, if this is such sharp policy, mm. maybe we should follow suit. Well, I mean, it's only a three-year uh, exemption, or so they say, and, and there's actually more people outside of Atlantic Canada. When you look at the people in Ontario, the North, and, and Western Canada, I know it doesn't apply to Alberta in any meaningful way, uh, who burn home heating oil, if you look at the math provided. Um, so it is a national program. Something just came to me, and I'll share it with you too. Wow. I think okay. I'll... That something... Just picture Danielle's voice. Something came to me. What if we... um? Oh, just decided to allow for a subsidy to, oh, I don't know, um, uh, help people transition to home heating fuel. Okay. Just to own the libs, the Minister of Finance, you just heard him, just off the top of his head, just spitballing here, proposed mm -hmm. a big, costly government program to help Albertans switch from natural gas to home heating fuel which is four times more expensive and way more carbon intensive. <laughs> Dale Smith, Nate Horner saying Alberta will provide a subsidy for people who want to convert from natural gas to home heating oil so they don't have to pay the carbon price. Heating oil is four times as expensive as natural gas, so you're paying more for spite. What a goddamn child. <laughs> I couldn't agree with Dale on that more. My eyes. Oh my God. That was so stupid. My eyes twitching. <laughs> I just. Really? Four times? Hey, here's a deal for you, Albertans. They don't math very well, do they? <laughs> oh my God. God. Uh, I just. I, 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 I just. <laughs> This is the guy that wants to set up the APP. Now I think I know where that 53% number came. Dude. And Albertans, if you ever needed a clearer signal that your government is clearly in the bag for big oil and where your APP dollars yeah. are going to go, hey, off the top of my head, let's pay you to make a transition that will make you pay more for your energy in a province where, based on inflation numbers in July, you're already paying 127.8% more for electricity than you did than you were the previous year because they allowed electric companies to actually withhold power while she's going all around. Albert is saying, hey, we need more baseload power. Or well, maybe if you let the power that you had actually run at times that it needed, you would need more baseload power. While kneecapping the renewable industries, while complaining that the federal government is kneecapping the oil industry, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it, why didn't he just say, "Look, big oil owns the UCP"? Why didn't he just say that? He just could come right out and say it, and we're gonna we're gonna make sure we stay on that teat. Just 
Do you have any doubt that any money they're going to pull out of the APP will probably never even make it into an APP fund and just directly go into? He wants, he actually thought it was a good idea to go on national TV, on a national political, the premier national daily political show and just spitball, hey, how about I make you pay four times more? This is the same government that said that you were getting an energy deferral and then got into power and said, oh, uh, did we say deferral? Uh, no, no, sorry, not, sorry, no, not deferral. Increase. No, not deferral. Sorry, I mistake. They said that you were getting an energy cost. Just, it was just going to be gone. You were not going to have to pay it at all. And then you planned on that. And then they came back and said, oh, mm. did we say you were not going to have to pay it at all? No, no, we just meant it was going to be deferred until later. This is... All the sirens are going off. The neon signs that are pointing are going like this. The strobe lights are going like this. This danger. Do not follow these people. Exactly. Follow them. They're not. So if the bottom falls out of oil in the coming decades and they can't find the APP, maybe the rest of Canada will help them? Must this adversarial relationship exist? This from the province yeah. that says, do we have to prop up every single government program? You know. Wow. Wow. I have one last thing for you before we go. Uh, this is from uh, John Brennan at JMB Prime. And this tweet nails it. Yesterday, the premiers demanded that the federal government stop signing agreements with municipalities to build affordable housing because housing is a provincial responsibility. Right. How ironic that Polyev blaming the PM for the housing crisis has been debunked by conservatives. Again constantly trying to win the nanosecond that you forget the long game and about being consistent. Again, I keep on saying constancy, consistency, coherence over time is not a conservative strong point. <laughs> Clearly. Oh. Mr. Grizzly, do we have a show? We do indeed, sir. Kits, I am so sorry for having brought so much weird packed it's concentrated weird <laughs> yeah and usually this is about like a month's worth of weird and it all happened in days they're losing their minds this is the end of this weird episode of the daily beaver morning show we hope that you liked Listening to this because we liked <laughs> making this. Liked is kind of the wrong word here. I'm not exactly sure which one to you, which verb nice. to use there. Yeah. <laughs> um, hope you are edified. <laughs> anyway, uh, because we hope we caring, uh, we hoped you helped. We hope yeah. we helped helps you learn something today. Yes. Yes, Manitoba feels like an island of sanity right now. Huh? Uh, yeah, indeed, Cassie. Um, because uh, sharing is caring and word of mouth is priceless, please tell your peeps and poops all about us. And because democracy is something that you do, uh, please, if you're in the Northwest Territories, make your plan to vote. November 14th is the date. Uh, and uh, write those letters. Please write those letters. Because <laughs> 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 these people be... These people be nerds, okay? They're just nerds. Um, if you would like to encourage us to do more, Mr. Grizzly just... Nerds and yurts? <laughs> nerds and yurts. <laughs> Shit. Um, uh, if you would like to... Uh, not miss an episode uh, right there underneath my chin. Uh, that QR code leads us to our pod page sponsored by the Ray Girl. Podpage.com slash the true North Euchre Beaver, lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. And uh, that way you don't have to miss an episode. Yes, Kit Tabby G says, wash your hands. <laughs> wash your hands, please. Just wash your hands. Please. Um, if you would like to. Uh, For the good like of all of us. And, yes. If you would like to like, share, and subscribe uh, the video of this uh, episode. Well, you can do that through our True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated YouTube page, like, share, subscribe, uh, and we appreciate it. And if you would like to encourage us to do more, well, uh, you can do that with our coffee page where you can find our tip jar to make a donation to the Eager Beaver Lodge Emergency Hydration Fund. Yes, 
And we say a big thank you to the best damn fam and all of podcasting for all your help. That's quickly brings you to our coffee page. That's ko-fi.com slash eager beaver, lowercase letters, all in one word. From the Beaver Lodge, this is your eager beaver saying, it could be a weird world out there, kids. So please be normal and kind with yourselves. <laughs> Mr. Grizzly, some words of wisdom, please. You know, I had a thought earlier and, and I just... <sighs> I'm just so to, so uh, I don't know, man. Here, look, I've got I've got this for you. This is this is because of what we've been talking about for the last few minutes. This is Theo's latest um, cartoon. <laughs> An armored truck full of money driving away, run over, running over a beaver. Ottawa is squeezing us. Yep, I'm just waiting for Mr. Freeland to say, you know, provinces, you two, you also have budgets. We've done our part. Mm -hmm. If you really believe in this, you will help your people. And if this is just grandstanding, then you won't. And then turn on her heels and show them her back and walk away. Yeah. We don't live at the Palm oh, View yeah. Motel. <laughs> Stop looking up with your palms up. Use some of your own damn money. Um, bootstrap it? Yep. Bootstrap it. Mr. Grizzly, roll the credits. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver media podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum, and The Pepper Master, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Mr. Grizzly, go. Oh, there he is. Peekaboo, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> Take a second. Half an uh, hour later in Newfoundland. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Grizzly, uh, I had a little visual there that I thought would be a good little Easter egg. It's a little, oh, a little, there we go. <laughs> Courtesy of the Ray Girl as well. These are the times we live in. <laughs> <laughs> for people yes. listening at home it's basically a picture of a cat holding a mouse uh, up like sort of like grapes he's going to feed himself and the cat is capturing a selfie of himself but so is the mouse <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> hey look i'm i'm eating dinner hey look i am dinner okay all right life in 2023 well, <laughs> see ya 